Hey guys, Bart from TST Industries here. In this video, we're gonna show you the installation of the Gen 2 flasher relay on a Kawasaki Z125. Now, what is this part used for? If you've replaced your OEM signals with any aftermarket type LED signal, you probably noticed that it's flashing a lot faster than the OEM rate of 85 cycles per minute. If you've gone ahead and replaced the front and rear with LEDs, you will notice that now you don't have any flash, it just stays on. So what are your options? You can go with a load balancing resistor on each individual uh, signal lamp to equalize the load on your signaling system, make the system draw more current and go back to the OEM rate. Or you could, uh, you could install one of these uh, relays that we produce specifically for this bike and that will enable you to slow the flash rate down to 85 cycles per minute with just one component and a clean installation. In this video, we're gonna show you how to do this installation. It is very specific to this bike. It is very easy. There is one caveat, and that is that after the installation of this system, you will no longer have the use of your dash indicator light, which to most guys won't be a problem because from the seating position while riding, you can clearly see your signals flashing, so that should not be a problem. Um, in the case that this is a problem and a deal breaker for you, we recommend that you steer around this solution. If this is an okay solution for you, keep watching and we'll show you how to install it. Let's begin. All right, so the first step will be to remove the two, two screws from these locations of the shroud and the headlight assembly. And those will enable us to pivot this forward, get access to where we need to be. And I just want to note that on this particular motorcycle, there is no OEM flasher relay. The flasher circuit is built in to the dash or your instrument cluster. There is no way to replace a flasher relay. There is only a way to piggyback a system onto your OEM system and make it perform at 85 cycles per minute. So I'll undo both sides of the screw. Rather, both screws on either side. When I take them out, we'll now have access behind here. This entire assembly does come off. It just sits on these studs here on this bracket and inserts into these grommets. I do like to work on this bike here with this in place. It's much less cumbersome. And now we will need to gain access to the harness plugs contained in this boot. So what I like to do is take the wiring out from behind this clip it makes it much easier to deal with. Now this is this boot is taped on this side. You can either untape it and slip it back or peel it back. I will untape it and replace the tape later. This makes my life a lot easier if you're okay doing that and have electrical tape handy. You will find that this is the easier of the solutions. As we peel this back, gain access here to all this wiring. And we are interested in particular in this plug. And to be more specific, the orange wires within this plug. There's only one orange wire in both male and female portions of this plug. We will use either a small screwdriver, a really tiny flathead screwdriver, or a pin to reset the locking mechanism of each one of these wires pins, withdraw them and use them on our system. Okay, so I grabbed some tools now. I will show you guys how to unlock these pins. I have used a, I have used a pin in the past and that works pretty well. I have these specialized pins for doing this type of work. You can use the sharp end of a safety pin if you have access to a tiny flathead screwdriver, this works best. So 
I'm going to show the process with the tiny screwdriver. I'm going to find where the orange wire goes in and find that position inside the plug. And there is a little window underneath the pin position where I can press in with a pin or a screwdriver and that will reset the crimp. I'll show you guys here how that, how that works. So this is in its set position. This little tab prevents this pin from slipping out. So what I do is go in from the front and compress that. And once that's formed down, it allows this pin to be withdrawn from the plug. All right, so now we got this side done. The other side is pretty much the same. I'll find the orange wire, find its position on the plug. Once again, the pin is the, the metal part of the pin is exposed here and right above it or below it, depending on how you're looking, but I'm holding it this way with the orange here. And this is the position I'm working on. So right above it is where I would slip in the pin or screwdriver press down on that locking feature and then pull it out from the back. Once again here, you guys can see that I've reset this mechanism here. I think that's better for you guys. So this, this gets pressed in with the screwdriver from the front. Once that's down, it just withdraws. All right, so that's nice and simple. I'm gonna grab TST relay and show you guys how to plug it in properly. So it really comes with this harness with a single wire on it and some heat shrink tubing. So this, this wire has a female portion of this plug system and it will accept this pin that we withdrew from this plug. Once that's in place, what I'm gonna do is just slip this heat shrink over. And now I'm gonna set the heat shrink. I like to use a heat gun. You can use a different heat source, like a common uh, lighter that you would get at a grocery store. Now we need to figure out which one of these other two holes we are going to insert the remaining orange wire into. Now in my R&D effort, I already marked my plug so that I don't forget. I'm gonna show you guys how to identify it properly. The white wire that comes already pre-configured on the plug is in the center position. And if you look at the front of the plug, where it plugs into its receiving female plug, you'll see the little window here will go to the right of that into this position. And this is where we're going to insert the remaining orange wire, but in from the rear. So on the orange wire, we have to make sure that the tab that we bent down to remove it from this plug is bent back up and that when we push it into this plug, it will set itself in place. So now I'm just gonna insert it through the back of this plug. And again, this, this plug is keyed. You'll see that there's a little window looking from this perspective, from the back of the plug, the window to the bottom here. And that is where the tab would face. And if you put it in, in the reverse of that, you'll just notice that it won't lock. Once you pull on it and it doesn't lock, you just swing it around 180 and you'll be good. So now this is ready to go. We will plug the OEM plug back into itself. We'll grab the TST relay, plug it in. And now we will test the system. So right now, we're flashing erratically. What we have to do is adjust the relay to the condition of the motorcycle. 
That means right now the condition of the motorcycle is such that we have an LED signal system in the front and an OEM incandescent lamp signal in the rear. <clears throat> this will take an adjustment to make it blink right. Had this bike had LEDs all around, it would already be blinking correctly as it comes preset from the factory. But for this particular condition, we'll need to slip off this gray cover that's done by prying up against the, the red portion here, and popping it off. And we'll take the circuit out. You have to make sure not to touch the circuit to any conducting metal parts out here. And then we will adjust the slope of the tensiometer to blink either faster or slower, but making sure that we don't have the double blink or triple blink. And just find the right place where this works right. And this looks pretty good to me. Once I found that place, I'm going to power down and reinsert this assembly into the cap. Now on the cap, you'll notice that there's one side that has a channel to accept the printed circuit board and then the other side does not have that channel so we'll make sure that the channel accepts your circuit board. Pop it back in, we'll slip the boot back over and now I'm just going to tape it back in place to make it as it was in its original condition. Pretty good right here. I'm gonna put it back into its position within these routing clips here. I think it's supposed to go through here too. That looks good right there. All right, so now I'm gonna grab a zip tie. What I like to do is tie this relay off to this boot so it doesn't dangle around, cause any problems down the road. As you can see, the TST relay has a nice little clip here can be used for mounting it to different things. I'm just using a common wire tie. This doesn't have to be super tight, just enough so that it doesn't vibrate out. All right, that looks good right here. Then we could proceed with reinstallation of all these components in the reverse order of disassembly. Put this back towards the bike, make sure that it clears all the wires. I'm gonna align this tab here, this boss on both sides. And bring in the screws that held, held all that together. Now using a five millimeter Allen, I'm gonna start the threads on those screws. Bottom it out, half a turn out. And once everything's aligned and you have both of these bottomed out, you could tighten them up. And now that's it. This installation is complete. We're going to power up the system and test it one more time. Looks like we're blinking on the left, blinking on the right. And right now you still have one OEM signal on the bike. So the bike will retain the function of your uh, dash indicator light. However, if you were to change both of these signals, both front and rear, to LED type signals, along with the use of a relay, now you will lose that indicator function and your only indicator of the, run, the signal lights actually functioning at the moment will be your front signals that you can clearly see from your riding position. All right, this installation is complete now and the bike's ready to go. 
If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, please place them below in the comment feed below this video. Other than that, have fun, be safe. See you guys later.